Resolution 17163, a resolution of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, authorizing a referendum to allow expenditures from the Open Space Trust Fund for recreation and conservation purposes. This permits a non-binding referendum to ascertain the sentiment of the voters regarding the use of the money in the Open Space Trust Fund. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. I'll make a motion with the following change. Well, okay. Uh, I would like to introduce this change to the second paragraph. The second paragraph to number one, to use essentially the same uh, wording that the county had passed uh, for their open space referendum. Uh, I think it's a, a, a more uh, specific in, in defining a way to uh, ask the question. So I make that motion. And I say this in the background that for two years we've expressed the need for a maintenance program to uh, to maintain and uh, make sure that these uh, properties are being properly managed and not being overtaken with uh, invasive spe species and and weeds when someone uh, stops using using it as farmland. I think it's an important issue. And I think this is one way to solve that, that maintenance issue. It's also a way to solve uh, some of the other maintenance problems that we have. Well, just for clarification, this question for the ballot is a non-binding question. It's, it's, as it states, just to get the sentiment of the public. If the public decided that it was something that they wanted per, to pursue, pursue, it would be going on. It would be something that would be next year, probably be an ordinance the following year. So this is not this question is not being put on the ballot to be able to just say okay it's you know a money grab to go spend the money it would then have to go as an ordinance the following year and what happened is last week the freeholders passed a similar resolution because after for about a year and a half the county open space committee went visited 23 municipalities to get the sentiment of each municipality i have a copy of it right here it can be found online at the freeholders board if anyone wanted to copy I'm not sure if um, you passed. Their agenda is, I don't know, six or 800 pages long. So if somebody looking through that, it could be yeah. quite tedious. 823 pages. But within, within the resolution that they passed is actually a uh, report it's of everything that they brought back to the freeholders as to what That's went on in each municipality. Like I said, 23. And that was their consensus. So they, the county has already passed this in order for next year, if any municipality wants to apply for open space money uh, for maintenance, they'll be looked at. Also, that they can still maintain the right to purchase open space. But like I said, once again, the question that's on or the resolution on our agenda is not to do the same thing in the county. It's basically to ask the public whether or not that's something that they'd like the municipality to pursue. And as far as the general budget, Hey, I'm all for putting the money in the general budget if we could. But as far as I was told, we could not. But so anyway, um, there's a motion. There's a motion to um, accept the changes suggested by Mr. Kadish. Is there a second to that? Did you read this? Yeah. It's a non-binding question. It's fine. I'll make the motion for a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Council Member Keating? Yes. Council Member Ohms? And that's to add this to the... Um, it would be adding okay, a non-binding question yeah. to, no. to the... the no. Um, no, so my, no. Council Member Rizzuto? No. <coughs> council President Murphy? Yes, and I'd just like to explain something. that this, What the council basically has done is given... has taken away the right for the public to make that determination at the ballot. We haven't voted on that yet. I thought we voted on the change in paragraph was that, one. Well, was the change actually uh, Mr. Kadish made the motion? That's correct. We voted on the change suggested by Mr. Kadish. If someone wants to move the original, how I'm going to vote. Someone wants to move the original ordinance resolution, and they're free to do so. He made the motion with the change. That's why I said that. 
But, uh, you know, I would like to point out that I've had a number of experiences with referendum, going back to the time when we needed schools. There are, there really is no such thing as a non-binding referendum. Either you need it or you don't. And the reason why schools are required now to, to put their buildings before a referendum, because it's a state law. It's not required of municipal government. Right now, to, to put this up as a non-binding referendum means nothing. I look at this as simply a way to put more money in the hands of a mayor who's had, who displayed the inability to handle smaller amounts of any consequence. So, you know, I just think he, the history that he has shown and to put this nine, almost one million dollars, nine hundred and sixty-three thousand four hundred and eighty-seven dollars and thirty-eight cents as available to proceed with development of his GAC uh, program and the maintenance of it, he hasn't proven to me that that particular program will add, will be a driver to this community for business. He hasn't proven to me that the amount of money that he's going to need has a terminus, an endpoint. I don't know what it's going to be. And I just don't know how you can take this amount of money and make it available when somebody has displayed the inability to handle smaller amounts. So on that basis, uh, I, I, can't, I can't go along with the passage of this resolution, not in its present form. And to say that this is what the public wants. No. No. I'm, no. Uh, That's not please. What I said. To say that we're not giving the public the opportunity to give their, uh, their you know, what their wishes may be. You know, that's like saying, would you like popcorn or Cracker Jacks? But, or do you just want popcorn? This is, do you just want popcorn? Now, the Cracker Jacks may be, or would you like to have the money that's in this fund refunded to the taxpayer? Would you like to As add it, that? Yes, I would, you know, I would love that. I'll make the motion no, to add that. Because I think it's a separate motion and I'm not about to, uh, quite honestly, put this up to a position where uh, it, it can be done without knowing, in fact, if it's allowable. And that's what I was and told it was not allowed. And plus the fact you need to know how much, in, how much in total would go to each individual household, if indeed it's uh, legal, because perhaps uh, members of households have moved and hence they would not get amount, that amount back. So it might have to be done to residences, not to an individual. If you're going to do that, then you might as well pull the, uh, the resolution and come back with a, another one at a later time. But the way oh. this is set, I can't go along with it. Right. But the purpose of the resolution was to put a question on the ballot just to ask the public whether or not this would be something they would be interested in as a referendum for the following year, period. Is there a motion to accept the original form, or do you just want to not do it? Doesn't matter. Like I said, you're just my opinion. Motion's you're on just... the floor. So if you want to call the question, call the question. There's no motion. There's no motion. Yeah. No, there we just voted no. Yeah. You voted no to, to modify it. Uh, I'd okay. like to read the modification. Shall the current use of Vernon Township's open space trust fund? in parentheses, acquisition of farmland preservation easements and preserving open spaces, which has a balance of $963,487.38, be modified to include the authorization that that fund may be also be used for stewardship projects such as uh, projects as well as development and maintenance of permanently easement 
preserved open space and passive recreational township owned properties. Very reasonable modification as far as I'm concerned. You vote it down, fine. Like I said, the whole purpose of it was to ask the public. If it's the public's money, ask them what they'd like to do with it. Anyway. No, we voted on the modification. Do we have a motion for 17163? No, make a motion. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? No. No second. Good. Next, we have Resolution 164, Appointment of Director of Recreation and Community Development. The Mayor appoints department heads with the advice and consent of the Council. This authorizes the appointment of the Director of Recreation and establishes a salary for the same. Is there a motion to adopt Resolution 17164? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, I have some questions. This. Um we voted this down, and then it went to a desk audit. And our um, lawyer wrote out a big dissertation of Ms. Downtain's um, performance and her responsibilities. And then Mr. Shortway, or Mayor Shortway, rather, wrote an appeal to civil service for this particular employee to be bumped up to supervisor. Civil service said yes, she qualifies for supervisor. So I want to know why you didn't put in director. Because now this anybody that puts in a um, desk audit in the future, why are we not going to now say, okay, well, civil service says you're bumped up, but we're going to bump you up more. So I think we're going to have to do that for everybody now, and we will have to give everybody a raise. This you're incorrect. Pardon me? You're incorrect. Because civil service titles don't always match our township titles. That is the closest. Civil service now didn't say oh, where are qualifications, where she should be. They said where she's doing the job. I'm saying she's doing it effectively and efficiently. They may come back with assistant supervisor, which is more than a recreation aide making $30,000 a year. So alleviate the problem, we move her to director, and then civil service does the second phase of their study. Now, there's been a lot of discussion. She doesn't have the formal education. She has a two-year psychology degree. Psychology degrees are acceptable by civil service. They give 30 college credits for every year you're in the position. So why didn't you say director? I did say this la why the last time. Why didn't you put time. her in as director? And so we did all of this for supervisor and spent the money for the lawyer no, to No, supervisor care of it. is the only thing that comes to director and supervisor are almost interchangeable. Same position. No, well, I think they're two the different things. <coughs> We don't have a, a supervisor position. The next thing I have to do, when civil service says this is the actual position, I have to ask you to include that as an ordinance for a new position in the township. And I can't do it until civil service says, and then you have to introduce the, you know, a, a consent to introducing the ordinance, and then hopefully passing it. You know, my concern, and I explained it very, very clearly, I have absolutely nothing against the performance of Ms. Downtain. I would not know if she did badly or poorly. I happen to know her personally, and I think very, very highly of her. I'm sure she does a very nice job. Unfortunately, you put in for a directorship. I find it hard to approve a promotion for a director of one person, herself. Then we get an embellished, I consider, an embellished list of duties where she is supervising two members of the DPW, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as far as I know, Mr. Babcock might have some concern about that because he's the head of the DPW. So who does the evaluation of those two individuals, Mr. Rizzo and Craig? Is it Mrs. Downtain? Does she sit down and tell them, tell everybody what a great job they're doing? Or is it Mrs. Mr. Babcock? Now, if it's Mrs. Downtain, I would venture to say that perhaps the union might have something to say about that. And speaking of unions, you know, normally desk audits are performed when an employee feels they're being taken advantage of. 
not because an employer says, you know, I'm going to push my point against a, a, a formal authority. So you chose to go against what the council decided to do and went for a desk audit. Let me ask you something. Following that, did you receive any other requests for desk audits from the DPW? Yes, with the, the MUA. Right. And would, do you think those desk audits, which cost the township money, would have come about had you not been so insistent upon pushing for the desk audit of Mrs. Downtown? They absolutely would have still came forward. You really think so? Yes, and she is being taken advantage because she's doing the job and doing the job well. Good employees need to be nurtured and put in positions. And she coordinates all these programs with other with recreation. I don't disagree with that. But when you come in and you, you embellish a statement and say she's being a supervisor for two people that there are not her direct reports plus two part-time individuals, you know, I find that hard to believe. What it shows me, Mr. Mayor, is that you are trying to make a case, not support a case. I didn't embellish. They come over here. She says where they're going to go. She's always in, com in conversation with Ed. Is there any difference? Ed, you know, we have the uh, two DPW guys. They're being uh, advised by John Skirbo. Excuse so me. Can I just can, excuse me? Can I just ask this? This. Um, our administrative code in 2011 created this position. We originally had um, Missy Weedbrock in that position. She was in this, and I'm just just asking because that was that was approved back in 2011. That's the position that was in there, and then it was I th I'm not sure it was a couple years later. I think maybe Mary Mary Captain worked there part time, and then it was over. And I, I'm sure that Jane was down in the senior center, but I don't. Other than that, I don't know. And I think Michelle came a couple years later. So I guess I'm just asking right now, what's the difference, whether it's the the position being um, the the job that that this employee is doing versus the one that started in 2011. What is the difference? Because I'm just saying right now you're talking about the number of because people that are being... Up, because yeah, but when it came up originally, up. But, uh, it was one. And then after I said one, magically the four people appear on a, uh, a report from the mayor. Okay, but I'm still asking what's the difference right now between this employee and the employee at that position than when it was originally created because by this government? Because there was more than one individual. And, and she wasn't making the, and the, the, the other individual. Yeah, but that was a total different amount well, of money. Yes, it was. Because right. if, you took, if you took the 65000 that Missy Weedbrock was making and the 30000 at the time Michelle was making, plus benefits for both of them. If you took her $45,000 now, plus her benefits, and the 25000 to the PAL, we're below what, what was happening prior, prior to 2016. When the mayor proposed giving the PAL... Not the way I figured it. When the mayor proposed giving responsibilities from the Recreation Department over to the PAL, I disagreed. And so did Mr. Wetzel. It passed. $25,000 was paid to them. So that's $25,000 less responsibility for that individual in the department. Now you're, going, you're asking for more money. But the amount of money you were asking for originally was significantly more than you're bringing up now. Mr. Mayor, you're playing games. You really are. You're playing games when you're telling people that it's we're against Michelle, when it's not that question at all. We're simply, I'm simply against the fact that you are not being true to what you were saying, that we needed a supervisor, not a director. And now you're coming back with, again with a resolution for a director. What's it going to be? Excuse me, what amount of money was it before? You said it was I a higher... I believe you were looking at twenty to $25,000 as a, as a raise. Now. No, that, this number was the same. Actually, it was 45000 before. And not to, I'm, I'm just saying, you said it was substantially higher before, and I'm just wanting to know if I missed. Well, I think it was substantially higher. It was 45000 Oh, well, that's substantially higher than this. No, it's not. What is it? It's $45,050. The number is different. It's just different. 
So I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to follow what you're saying. I mean, it was 45,000 last time. This has 45,050 because they changed the number because you couldn't bring it down because again, this council approved a salary range ordinance that went from 45,000 to 65,000. So for that position, this council said that's the amount of money that that person will pay, be paid. Now, Missy Rebrock, now I could be mistaken by a couple thousand, but I believe she was paid $65,000 a year. That's right. Michelle was making 30, that's $95,000. So if you took the 45,000 that Michelle would get paid and you add on the 25,000 we gave to the PAL, okay, what are we coming up to? 70,000. 70, and it was, it was, it was 95,000 that we were paying in salaries. Besides, another employee got benefits. So I'm just trying to, it's like somebody helped me justify this because it's 25,000. We were paying $25,000 out more plus benefits. So that's why I'm just saying is it's, it doesn't make sense to me that you're saying it's substantially higher now. It's not. It's $25,000 less in salaries plus benefits. The jobs being done, you know, regardless of whether or not there's DPW employees in there, and I know when the beautification committee had, had some questions come up over the uh, maintenance of the parks, it turned out, just happened to turn out that the parks employees were reporting to Michelle because of the work that they did. So, like I said, right now, the way I look at it, it's a savings to the township of $25,000 having her in that position, plus benefits, whatever that cost is. What is the cost for benefits? Family would be 35000 How much? 35000 35000 for family benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's twenty five plus thirty five. Yeah, right now is what the township is saving mm -hmm. from not having those the, the aide and the full-time director, as we had for how many, four or five years? Oh, you haven't added the benefits to the salary? when you add to uh, that she's, you know, you're putting down right now. I just said that, but it's still, she's had the benefits. She's had the benefits. When Missy Weebrock left and 25,000 went to the PAL, we're now, and if we give Michelle 45, you're giving the PAL 25, that's 70. Prior to that, it was $95,000 between Missy and Michelle for salaries. They both had fa family benefits. The CFO just said, by not having that one employee, it's 35,000 in benefits, plus 25,000, even with that going to PAL. So that's $60,000 right now that the town has saved. And you're denying this, you know, you're, you're saying you're denying this, and you're saying, you know, so, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> that's the position. Services, she's doing a supervisory role. Supervisor. But that's and what the that's mayor just said. He said that the, according to civil service, the director's position is not in civil service. Is I that? I think they do have a director civil service position. No, no they, they just don't. wrote not back. With that's what they just wrote back. They do. That's for health care institutions, not for like community recreation. Now, this is an appointed position? Yes. So um, that doesn't mean then it's secure then, right? Every year I have to appoint her, every mayor that comes No, for in? the rest of my term, I believe. Right, but the next mayor? Can abolish it as it's director. It's not a... Um, like all the directors, when I came on... So there's no job security with it? No, but she would be in whatever her civil service title is. And that was just the only uh, employees that are really are the um, tenured employees? The clerk, right. the CFO. So her job is not secure then. No. With the next mayor coming in. No. No. Just like it well, wasn't. It just like it wasn't now. Just like it wasn't now. Those jobs were not secure when when uh, Mayor Shortway came in. I'm just. No, I'm just. No, but I'm just saying. It's just just, just like when Mayor Shortway is came not in. Secure for her then. No. So if she does get bumped up, it's not a secure <clears throat> job. No. Nope. Wow, that's a big chance to take. Well, I'd like to table this. I just want to um, investigate a few things. Unfortunately, you can't table it. Yeah. No, because otherwise, there's a time. There's a, this is a time. There's a time, time element involved on this, and if it's not passed by a certain date, it's all to the report. She's unable to report to work. Oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't table it out. Do a motion and a second on the floor. Call. 
Call the vote. Council Member Kadish? Yes. Council Member Ohms? Yes. Council Member Rizzuto? Yes. Council Member President Murphy? Yes. Motion carries to pass resolution 17164. Next, we have resolution 17. Excuse me, one moment. Yep. This was the report that came back. Ms. Downtain is considered to be serving provisionally in the title of recreation supervisor, not director. Correct. So that's, that's my point. The, you came and proposed as her as a director rather than a supervisor. <coughs> this is what our administrative code has, but according to the civil service, they're recognizing one as the other separate, interactive. But there were two separate, there are two separate categories within the civil service classification. One is supervisor, one is director. I think if you read the director more closely, it involves institutions. As in the medical institutions, you say? Correct. <laughs> or a health care Re facility or a mental facility, psychological facility. Resolution 17165, authorizing, authorizing the mayor to execute an interlocal service agreement with, the Depart with Vernon Township Municipal Utilities Authority for the services of Department of Public Works. The township terminated its shared service with the MUA last year and is currently operating without contract. This resolution authorizes signing a new contract with the MUA to utilize DPW staff. May I have a motion to adopt resolution 165? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Yes. I note that in the, con in the details of the contract, it's for one year. Did you ever propose a multi-year, three-year contract to the BTMUA? No. Why? Because I want to study having a private entity do the work to save money. I've talked to the professional commissioners as well as other organizations like Suez. They say they can do it cheaper. The MUA said they are not going to put out an RFP, it was a form to this next week, till I give them a deadline. That is the deadline. If it doesn't work, bids come in after the RFP and they're too high, then we'll negotiate another contract next year. Last, over the last two years, the biggest drop in the budget has been in interlocal agreements. By utilizing the DPW, which is now protecting the township assets, and they are people who you know, work for the township, many of them live in the township, rather than a group or an organization or a person that will be doing it for a profit motive, you would be adding to the revenue stream for the township rather than just putting another appropriation in the expense line. And yet you, re you refuse to consider that possibility. I'm not going to use money as a revenue stream on the back of the rate users. If we can but get it cheaper the, and we can pass on a savings to these rate users, why aren't we exploring because this? Because your first consideration not only should be to the rate payers, but should be to the taxpayers. And they are also taxpayers. And by doing so, you might be able to save them an amount of money in the income, in the property tax that they have to pay. What you're proposing, we'll never know until we get RFPs and bids out. We we'll never know until me, we do it. We did get RFPs and bids out, and, it, not, it, they and let's talk about that RFP. The interlocal agreement between the they town and the MUA now is like three pages. The one they sent out is 79 pages. It was copied from a PACCON who has a more extensive system. It didn't even apply to our system. And you knew it was coming from a PACCON because they weren't clever enough to white out all the PACCONs in the agreement. <laughs> they should cater the agreement to what we have. Not what another town has. I have a question. That RFP, does that include um, the administrative role that the, the director does right now? Or is that RFP just for the service? Just for the maintenance and operation. It has nothing to do 
with <coughs> the administration and Mr. Skirbo's position. It has nothing to do with it. I would like to amend this resolution to a three-year agreement. It would provide the township with the ability to stabilize its costs on the treat on the handling of the maintenance of the uh, sewer system. It would provide the MUA if they need to come up with a uh, an RFQ to at least have all of the details in terms of what is required on an annual basis. And even then, having gone through it annually, they would be able to pick it up so that it would be available on an RFQ and it hence would be more accurate. It's not gonna happen. It's gonna be one year and I'm not gonna sign the contract. Okay. So if we're coming me, out the 18th, I'll study the RFP let me just and ask, the proposals. Excuse me, let me, let me just ask, right now the MUA is supposed to be paying the township and I think one of the employees is supposed to be getting a stipend. Is that employee getting, I heard that the employee was not getting the stipend. No, I learned last week they didn't pay the 70% of their benefits that they agreed to or pay this employee his $700 stipend because so, there is no contract. So these, the uh, licensed operator isn't even getting paid for what he deserves. So you're just putting the squeeze on us now because we can't pay them because we don't have a contract, but we are trying to get a two-year or three-year contract. So we're sort of kind of, this is all political. Uh, no, I want to evaluate costs to save ratepayers money. And why is there, yeah, why, why didn't they? You want to save ratepayers money, but yet then we, with the ambulance, we want to bring in money from, because you know we're going to, there, the way that ordinance read was... All right, well, we're on, we're, we're, we're on the MUA. So, we're on the MUA. I understand So that. let's stick with the MUA. But, I'm just making but a the whole thing with this is, is why haven't they provided the RFPs? Why Did hasn't, they say? The, why I mean, hasn't, just, why I hasn't the mayor signed, you know, gone ahead and signed the three-year uh, contract when directed by three members of the council? I think the mayor negotiates the contracts. If that's, that's different, right. if that's different attorney, please let us know. But I just, I'm just wondering if, because I've, we've heard for months that the MUA was supposed to get RFPs. I'm just wondering why, aren't, why are they not doing it? According to the email I got last, year, uh, last week, it's because there's no deadline when they have to pull the guys. So I gave them a deadline. Now they can put the RFPs out. And, and it, with, with, a, with a longer contract, what happens if they put the RFPs out and it ends up being more economical? What, I mean, well, well, it, there'll be no purpose for them. Let me ask you a question. With this, are you still considering using the DPW for night work and weekends? Is that emergencies, still yes. Still going along with that? Yeah, they no, would night, come out on the weekends. Night work and weekends. Yes. So this would just be for... So you'd have one company doing days and then the... DPW and stuff would be doing that at night and weekends. Sure. As so no wonder they can come needed. in at a lower bid for that. According to this, is 24-7 DPW for this year. It's yes, for this year to the but 31st. Now, but you want to put out an RFQ with the township doing daytime, I'm sorry, nighttime and off time and the, a, a third party doing it during the day so they can respond to emergencies. Let me tell you, I don't know what you know about management, Mr. Mayor, but oh, all you're asking for then is a problem because the day side is going to blame the night side and the night side is going to blame the day side. And let me tell you, I would rather stand behind my guys who work in town as part of the DPW where they have a vested interest rather than some third party who has an interest in making money. So can't we just come up with a two-year contract? Can we, can we compromise at least at a two-year contract? Because I'm not. You want to make it a two-year contract? Fine, I'll go along we'll with compromise. that. Compromise. And that Very way you good. can put out your RFQs and do what you want. But you know, at, at this point, you've completely overlooked, in my mind, the ability to begin a revenue stream that is sorely needed in this township by utilizing the amount of money that you could be getting from the, the MUA as part of that revenue stream. And then, not only that, but your appropriations <coughs> line the following year would not have to include those people because they would be working for the, DP, for the MUA. Well, the one year... But yet you would you'll be willing to just put in there 
that amount of money for a third party as an expense, and you get nothing for it. I think the one year originally came up because that's what the MUA was asking for back in, was it back in February or February. March, whenever? That's because we put the squeeze on them to get the I don't, And they said that they, really they wanted a one year. don't understand what the problem is. Well, anyway, I'm just asking. Clause 5 says review of agreement. In December of each year, this agreement is in effect. The party shall review and evaluate the nature and efficiency and so on. So it can be renewed every year. It's well, not a big he's deal. Not gonna renew it. He's well, that's up to him. He's the mayor. Except on a three-year or multi-year contract, so costs increase. are locked in. Why would you want to give the <coughs> PTMUA the ability to raise its rates? Well, they by answer doing the, by doing a three-year contract. To the, consumer. the township knows what it's going to be charging, and the BTMUA knows what it's going to be paying. Well, since we're so close already to the February deadline, is there a problem? I mean, I, Council Member Rizzuto didn't seem to have a problem with two years. I don't know what the mayor's view on this is, whether or not. Staying with one year, and we'll talk to the commissioners at their next meeting. I've talked to the commissioners, and all of the ones that I've talked to all say three year is fine. They would love it because it stabilizes their expense and they know how to budget for the oncoming year because it's a significant part of their budget. Now, I'm, I asked this previously, and you never said that you didn't say it, you, you didn't contact it. You kind of glossed over it. When is the... Does anyone know when the next MUA meeting is? Is it after our next council meeting? This week, Thursday. I think. Is it this week? Mm -hmm. It's this week. Let me vote on this. Didn't I make a motion that I will compromise with you. Instead of being a three year contract, a two year contract. I didn't do it. We'll talk As about it at the next council meeting. I want to go to the commissioners this Thursday. The commissioners, it's on the 17th, is there a meeting? Mm -hmm. And then we could, so we could just table this till the 20th, 28th? Well, however you want to do it. You want to vote on it? It's up to you. That's already voted on. No, you haven't voted on it. No, we didn't. Motion. Yeah. motion. Yeah. Now we have a motion to table. You want to call well, the question? Or you want no, I'm just saying is, is, to... is if the mayor, you know, right now we're, he, he wants one year, he wants to speak to the commissioners, I guess, about the RFPs. I'm just saying is then is there any, any at this point other than the fact that we're not getting paid by the MUA for the money for is it the, for the benefits and the one employee is not receiving their stipend Correct. are we obligated to pay him that stipend even though we're not getting the money from the MUA it's a legal no question. authorization to pay him right. without the contract which is why he hasn't been paid okay I have nothing in writing I was to just, give to payroll just asking. for backup to pay him That's I mean I'll make a motion to table it till the 28th so the mayor's had time to speak to the MUA and then revisit it on that day. Mr. Mizzou, you good with that? It, I'm fine with that. Is there a second? At Council Member Rizzuto seconding the table to the 28th. Roll call. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Council Member Kadish? No. Council Member Ooms? Yes, to table. Council Member Rizzuto? Yes, to table. Council President Murphy. Yes. Motion carries to the table of resolution 17165 to August 28th. <laughs> oh, can we have a uh, motion for a five minute recess? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Resolution 17166, a resolution authorizing drawdown on the irrevocable letter of credit from Mountain Creek Resort Incorporated. The township holds a letter of credit from Mountain Creek Resort. This resolution authorizes the township to draw on that letter of credit. May I have a motion to adopt resolution 17166? Motion. Is there a second? What's that? There's no second? Second. Oh. Well, uh, Council Member Rizzuto just seconded. Um, any discussion? Yeah, in total? I think the way the letter code is drafted, it can only be drawn in total. In total. It does not allow incremental draws. Okay. At, by, on what date does this have to be drawn by? September 28th is. September 28th, the letter credit expires. 
so so pretty much all of this money, this one point is it nine seven million, will go towards the payment. So Mountain Creek is not paying us. Paying Mountain Creek's not paying the MUA, and the MUA is not paying the township. And this is what this drawdown money will be used for? Well, the way the resolution is drafted now is the drawdown money is going to be placed in a separate segregated account, um, separate from all other municipal funds, and then the municipality can determine as the Mountain Creek situation evolves in Mountain Creek, if they do miss debt service payments, this can be used to cover those debt service payments. And does the council vote on whether or not when any of this money is used? Is it, does it come back to the council? The council can if it desires to do so. I think it's in the. I think it's right. in there that the council would vote on it. Correct. But that's what I'm just verifying. Out that's correct. The the, I mean, the purpose of the resolution is to ensure that the funds are separately segregated, do not become part of uh, any general funds, and are used for uh, the intended purpose, which is the debt service for the uh, sewer system. But whenever there's a drawdown and it's used towards it, it'll come back to the council for a vote. Correct. And what happens well, you if you draw on the whole thing, though? Right, right. But well, you, whenever they sp you draw the whole thing and you put it in a separate. But account. what happens yeah. if we don't pass the resolution? The letter of credit uh, continues to be uh, in effect until September 28th. And then what? Uh, that's a good question as to what happens. Then it expires and it has to be know, renewed. Mm -hmm. Previously what's happened is when there were previous owners and when the, the, newest, the newer owners were uh, more solvent, they renewed the letter of credit prior to that date so that there is an ongoing hence an evergreen letter of credit. If we don't draw down on it and they choose not to renew it, we lose $1.9 million in change right. in uh, leverage and money. So, it, so is it safe to say that we need to take it now or we may lose it? That's right. right. We have till September okay. 28th. 28th to pull it out, but it's just to make okay. sure that everybody understands that it's not going anyplace else. Changed my mind. Roll call. Council Member Kadish? Yes. Council Member Ohms? Yes. Council Member Rizzuto? Yes. Council President Murphy? Yes. Motion carries to adopt Resolution 17162. <coughs> Ordinance 1710. Ordinance of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 148 and Chapter 250 of the Code of the Township of Vernon regarding potentially dangerous dogs. In the event that the court rules that a dog is potentially dangerous, the township has numerous requirements it must fulfill, including monthly inspections of the dog's enclosure. Currently, the township does not have a section in its code for the licensing fee for potentially dangerous dog, dogs. This updates the code to include licensing oh, fees. This ordinance had been tabled at its public hearing on July 10th for reintroduction tonight. May I have a motion to reintroduce Ordinance 1710 with a public hearing to be held August 28th, 2017? Motion. Is there a second? I'll make the second. Well, can you make an amendment on an introduction? And what, what amendment? I would like to make an amendment to the ordinance. On what? I'd like to change the 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 amount. And can I just ask why? I mean, as I'd a discussion like to, item? Sure. Yeah. I'd like to change it to 500 to be more in line with Sparta, our surrounding towns, Hardiston and okay. West Milford. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I believe we stated that and there was agreement on the part of the, the majority of the council to have that amount changed at the last meeting. So I'd like to, to amend the, the ordinance to be $500. You realize that this that amount of money cannot be used for education or anything else, just towards this. Well, you that was something that you said last time. I know. I understand I said that. It's use it the way, I guess, that it's intended to be used. Well, no, it, it outlines how it's going to be used. So whatever it towards outlines the, towards in the, the ordinance. Uh, towards the administrate. I haven't amended my so motion. Whatever it's um, outlined in the ordinance, I mean, that's the way it's going to be used. So you want to make a motion to amend the ordinance? To 500, yes. Well, presently pending is a motion to introduce the ordinance as drafted. That would have to be ruled on first before you get to an amendment. 
So say it again. Mr. Kadish's motion to introduce the ordinance was seconded as drafted. Well, can I can you remove this motion? You could, you could <laughs> withdraw. There could be a motion to withdraw. The It'll be easier to withdraw it. Okay, and, and like, yes. I'm not withdrawing. <laughs> okay. So you got to vote it. So what's the question? Don't forget, I just got out of the hospital. Please, please. The, que the question is whether or not to introduce the ordinance as drafted with a fee of $700. On second reading, it can be amended. That to have a lower fee, that would be a substantive change that requires subsequent third reading of the ordinance. But as of right now, the motion is to approve the ordinance as drafted. Oh, okay. Or introduce, I'm sorry, not approve. I'm calling the question. Council Member Yes. Council Member Ohms? No. Council Member Rizzuto? No. Council Member Murphy? <laughs> Good God. So, so when I vote, what happens to this ordinance? Well, nothing. It doesn't get introduced. So I'm just, so I'm going to go back to, so if, Mr. If, if Council Member Kadish just changed his motion, to no, the five hundred dollars, no, no which, which he did not. So at the next meeting, if someone wants to introduce an ordinance with a different, a brand new one amount, they're free to do so. Okay. Well. Oh, there. What are you saying? I'm sorry. If someone wants to introduce a new ordinance at the next meeting with a different free fee amount, they can do so. I'd like Council Member Kadish to reconsider <laughs> his motion. So you're saying we can't amend it? The motion, at, the motion was to introduce the ordinance as drafted with the $700 fee. That motion does not have the requisite number of votes, so it does not in, is not introduced. If at the next meeting someone wants to introduce a similar ordinance with a different fee structure, they can do so. Okay, so it's <coughs> not getting introduced then. Correct. Oh, okay. So we'll come back at another time. You happy? I vote yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're putting your glasses away. The meeting's not over. <laughs> Look, Dan's getting up. Yeah, I can leave. Uh -huh. so no, it's on you. No. Three mm no's -mm. and one yes. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, Council Commons. Council Member Rizzuto. Oh, wait, I no gotta comment. get to my comments. Council Member Holmes. Oh, Dan, did you have any comments? <coughs> no, I asked you. Council Member Rizzuto said no comment, and I went to you. I'm sorry. <coughs> sorry. Bear with me. I do have comments. And I wrote them down. Did you have any comments, Dan? Where's my comments? <coughs> I just feel that uh, I'm very proud of the 43 congressmen who have gotten together and tried to iron out some of their differences without polarizing practically every issue. I think we should perhaps mirror that. I just held to my guns over the dog license fee because I, I think we've gone from the absurd to, to nonsense. <laughs> The fee is about one dog per maybe every two years. And to quibble over 500 or $700 is just ridiculous. The dog should have been properly managed in the first place before it got to that point. And it's a judge who makes this determination. We're just updating our ordinance. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you please keep the comments down? Dog should have been put down. The dog should have been. And the judge ruled it. No, the prosecutor. Uh, well, yeah, but we're talking just this ordinance is for okay. all the dogs down the no, road. No, no, this is just for dogs that have been determined to be dangerous. Right, for the rest of. By our, judges. All right, but it's not just one dog. There's no, this is the second time dogs. around. There'll be now we're going for dogs. the third. No, no. There's not multiple dogs. There's only one dog adjudicated to be dangerous. This is for how we're going to charge going on every year for a dog that's deemed. It's so, anyway, it's okay. Whatever. Yeah, just that's what I say, whatever. Is that your comment? You're done? I comment, yes. Okay. I want to thank all my fellow council <laughs> for being so nice to me and um, supporting me and wishing me well in this past week. And Mayor Shortway. 
and uh, Lauren and everybody and all my friends. So thank you. So I had asked at a previous meeting about committees doing reports. So Greenway did a report, which was great. So could we have a schedule of maybe the other committees? Especially Dan had mentioned the ones that have line items, uh, money line items. So I was just wondering if we got anywhere with that. We can do that. Okay. You're on beautification. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the chair. That's okay. You can do it. <laughs> I would. I would do it. I would do it. And um, that's all. The other one being what? The uh, economic? I don't think we have one. That. No, we Recreation. don't have one. Recreation, Recreation and historic preservation, and well, we all have minutes. The EC. Okay. The um, you you mentioned before about the attorney fees, and I was just wondering and about recouping attorney fees. What would be the cost if we were to ask our attorney to um, go attempt to recoup the attorney fees from the lawsuit from the environmental commission, prior environmental commission members? What would be the cost? Two percent. Five hundred to seven hundred and fifty dollars. Excuse me. Five hundred. Five hundred to seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. That was the attorney fee. No, no I just asked. I just asked. Excuse me. Could you please not just, yell out? I, yes, but you, could you? You had your turn to comment, so please keep your comments now to yourself. The um, no, I just asked what the cost would be if an, if the attorney attempted to pursue oh, 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 the money. Okay. That's what I just wanted oh, to know. All right. And this is a uh, comment regarding um, Great Gorge Village. And it has to do with Vernon Township having acquired um, the, uh, sewer comp the sewer from United Water back in 2011. You know, had the township not purchased United Water back then, the, the sewer service area, the town would have probably, the MUA would have been hitting that wall much sooner. But what happened is, uh, the MUA pretty much, through that transaction, received 1,300 ratepayers overnight. So that's really what began that whole cycle for Great Gorge Village. But it, like I said, it, it kind of, in my opinion, took the onus off of Mountain Creek at that time, who they were required to pay 100% of the shortfall. And then thus, that was just, uh, you know, from when the MUA was formed to where it is now. That's where it started. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. And that's all I have. Motion to adjourn. Second. Hi. <laughs> 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 it's a long day for me. Can you drive home? I am. <laughs>